Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of the 3D Printed Body Kit. The last Body Kit episode was an introduction to this series and like a what to expect with the upcoming videos. If you wanna watch that, click here. This is all part of my new series, 3D Printed Body Kit, which will be filmed alongside the Dotson 240Z restoration. Before we get into what we're doing in this episode, I wanted to release the winners to the poster giveaway that I did in my last Body Kit episode. Those winners are Des TK Soen, Emil Dahl Jensen, Dizzy on PC, Raul Alvarez, and Y Yeet. So congratulations on winning. To the winners, I commented under your guys' comments on my last video with instructions on how to claim your prize. So go read those comments so I can send you your poster. To those of you guys who didn't win, this is not your last chance. I do poster giveaways all the time. I think this is my third or fourth. I will do more in the future, more chances to win, more posters. One more thing before we get into what we're doing in this episode, I just released a bunch of new merch, including hoodies, t-shirts, t-shirts, sweatpants, and beanies. If you're interested in any of those or just wanna check them out, check out my Etsy. There's a link in the description of this video. There's also a link on my YouTube channel. Go buy some merch. Now finally, what we're doing in this episode. In this episode, we're talking about the design process that went into making my 3D printed body kit. More specifically, the software I used and the process in which I used them. One quick note about the software I use in this video. This software is not the only software you can use to make a 3D printed body kit. There's a wide range of alternatives, some free, some paid. So do your research and see which one works best for you. So to get into the meat of the subject, I'm gonna list out the process from start to finish. So first, we have mocking up the kit on paper. Second, we have mocking it up in 3ds Max. Third, we have mocking it up in Fusion 360. And then fourth, we have 3D printing. Now there's a lot more all within that, and that's what I'm gonna get into right now. Paper mock-up. So why would I mark it up on paper? I put this together in under a minute. Designing a body kit in 3ds Max or Fusion 360, it takes time, it could take hours, it could take days. So mocking up on paper gives you a really quick, rough estimate of what it's gonna look like and you know, what you wanna follow through in your 3D software with. Doing a paper mock-up is a really great way to throw together all your thoughts on a piece of paper as quick as possible. 3D modeling, it's not fast, it's really slow. 3D modeling a body kit is like sculpting a body kit out of foam, but digitally. Now once we have our paper mock-up, the next step is to go into 3ds Max. Before we get into what we do with 3ds Max, I wanna give you guys a little bit of a comparison between 3ds Max and Fusion 360. 3ds Max was designed for animation. There's a ton of really popular films that were made with 3ds Max, including Iron Man, Alice in Wonderland, the new one, Spider-Man 3, Transformers, etc., etc., etc. The point being that parts in 3ds Max never had to have dimensional accuracy. And although 3ds Max does retain dimensional accuracy, it doesn't give you the tools to make certain parts of your physical product a certain dimension. And that's where we get into Fusion 360. Fusion 360 gives you all the tools to make dimensionally accurate products. For example, the diameter of a wheel well, we can make a perfect dimension. Or like the bolt holes in the body kit, we can make an exact diameter. We can space those bolt holes out perfectly. Fusion 360 gives you all those tools and makes it really easy to do that. 3ds Max does not. And now Fusion 360, although it gives you all those tools to make incredibly dimensionally accurate parts, it does not give you the tools to make complex curves easily. So like on a body kit or like the body of a car, those complex curves you see, that's not easy to do in Fusion 360. It's time consuming, and in my opinion, it's annoying, which is why I start with 3ds Max, because the complex curves are easy. They're easy to manipulate and test alternatives with. And there's so many more differences between 3ds Max and Fusion 360. Those are just the ones applicable to this body kit and to what we're doing in this video. Now let's get into what we're doing in 3ds Max today. And here we're gonna start with a tube and we're gonna turn that tube into the front fender. This is kind of how these 3D softwares work. You start with like a cube or a cylinder or a tube and you manipulate those vertices and the polygons to kind of make the object that you want. Now, something that I forgot to mention, which is really important in all of this is that you need a 3D scan to properly make a part that's gonna fit your car. The part will not fit your car if you're using something like a Forza model. It just won't, they're not accurate. And I've actually tested that. I've put two models together, the 3D scan that I have and the Forza model, and the body lines are off. For example, sometimes the body lines are like a couple inches lower, the diameter of the wheel well's off, the wheel well is actually too close to the front or too close to the door, the door lines are not correct. So those little issues will make your product not fit your car. So you have to use a 3D scan. And now for the sake of this video, I'm actually using a Forza model. That's because at the time of making this video, I didn't have a 3D scan. And now you can do that too. You can make the body kit off of the Forza model or the model that you have available to you and then later tweak it so it fits the 3D scan. 
And now the question on where do I get a 3D scan? 3D scans are hard to come by. You usually can't just purchase them online. You will most likely have to get a 3D scan of your car done, either in your house, in your garage, or you'll have to go to the facility with the 3D scanner and have it done there. If you're local to like LA or New York City, there are so many rental places that will rent you the 3D scanners for, you know, a couple hundred dollars for the day. And so now we finished the mock-up in 3ds max i duplicated it to the other side so you can see how it fits this is pretty close to what i had originally drawn up here's a little sneak peek of what it looks like with a few other parts i have in the works and now we have the part model in 3ds max we're going to transfer that to fusion 360. what we're doing here is we're adding some grooves for the mounting hardware and some supports in the rear music time All right, so now that we have the grooves done and the supports in the rear finished, we're gonna split the fender up into printable parts. And this means making it the size of my print area. The print volume for my 3D printer is 250 by 210 by 210 millimeters. I'm cutting it up in the least amount of parts possible. Now, as well as that, we need to add a way to be able to join the parts back together later on and make sure they're joined accurately. To do that, we're adding Lego like connectors along the entire surface area of where the part is split. This will allow the pieces to be pushed together later and then we can glue around that to make sure the parts get put back together perfectly. And so that is basically it for the design process. You know, we start with paper, we get a great rough draft. Then we switch to 3ds Max, we get that initial mock-up. We transfer that mock-up with the complex curves to Fusion 360, where we chop it up. We add bolt holes and places for the hardware to go, things that need dimensional accuracy. And then we're gonna export it and 3D print it, but we're gonna do that in the next episode. So stay tuned for that. One last note before we sign off. This is a question I get a lot on my Instagram and Facebook, which is where did you learn how to use these softwares? And for 3ds Max, I actually learned it based off of YouTube tutorials. I just Googled, you know, how to make a wheel. And then I watched the tutorial and I replicated it in 3ds Max and I just, you know, I did multiple of those until I was really good at it. Making body kits is really similar to 3D modeling a car, but just, you know, a tiny part of the car. So I would watch how to 3D model an entire car and I would get good at 3D modeling the entire car and then I'd be good at 3D modeling, you know, just the fender or just a wide body kit, something like that. So that's how I learned 3ds Max. And now for Fusion 360, I actually learned that on Udemy. Udemy is like online college, but you get to pick exactly the courses you wanna learn and you only pay for that. The courses range in prices. Sometimes they're like 50 bucks, sometimes they're a hundred bucks, but they're totally worth it. This is not an advertisement, by the way. This is just the website that I happen to learn Fusion 360 on. You can probably find courses on YouTube of how to learn Fusion 360, but I personally use Udemy, so just wanted to give you guys that little bit of information. Now, like I said, in the next episode, we're gonna be going over the 3D printing process, including slicing software, including what 3D printer I use, why I pick the 3D printer I use, and a ton of great questions relating to the actual 3D printing part of this body kit. So if you guys are interested in that, stay tuned for the next episode. I will go over that in detail. I will answer as many questions as you want. If you have questions related to the 3D printing part, post them in this video and I'll try to answer them in the next video. So that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. And since we're in December right now, happy holidays and stay safe. I will catch you guys in the next one.